How's it going guys? Welcome back to another episode. In this little short episode, I'm gonna teach you guys how I make my insect keeper tubs. G'day, my name's Luke and I'm an avid reptile and amphibian keeper. On this channel, you'll see DIY tutorials, care videos, herping clips, and plenty of other animal related content. Please make sure to subscribe and check out what my animals and I are up to. Now I make some insect tubs up pretty easy and pretty cheap. They don't have to cost an arm and a leg, but they just they serve a purpose. Um, I use these to you know breed wood roaches in or just even store insects in. So I store my crickets and things like that in tubs like this. But I'm going to make a whole bunch of new ones up using these tubs here, these black ones. So there's a couple of easily accessible things that you can get from Bunnings that you're going to need for this build. You're going to need some sort of storage tub. So I've chosen to go the route of these black ones here. Um, these are pretty cheap at the moment, I think they're about 8 bucks or thereabouts. Um, the reason I actually decided to go black is I've recently, well, I've always kept them in clear tubs like this that so you can see through. And they end up looking pretty scungy and not looking too crash hot. So I've decided to kind of try to neaten up the, the reptile area here in the garage and try to make it look a little bit neater. So at least the black ones, you're not going to be able to see the insects inside of them. But not only that. The insects, because it's nice and dark in there, they might feel a bit more secure, so they might kind of roam around a little bit more. The woodies might breed a little bit more. They'll be able to get food and things because they feel nice and secure in the dark there. The other things you're going to need for this build, if you're doing woodies, you don't necessarily need to do this if you're doing crickets. So I've just got some petroleum jelly here, or Vaseline. Uh, basically, it's just a, a lubricant of sorts that you're going to rub around the inside edge just to stop those pesky woodies running around your garage or your room or wherever you're keeping your bugs. Uh, a lot of people out there use Fluon. Fluon's fantastic, uh, but if you get like a little gap or you scrape the barrier in the Fluon, uh, bugs end up everywhere. So I personally, you know, I used to use a lot of Fluon. I just go to petroleum jelly now and I just kind of top it up when I need to. The other thing you're gonna need is some sort of aluminium fly screen. Don't get the fiberglass ones because the bugs can chew through it. Get the aluminium so it's a little bit safer and then that way you can keep your bugs in your box. So I use this nice aluminium fly screen. Again, all this stuff you can pick up from Bunnings or, or you know, petroleum jelly, probably go to the chemist or the supermarket. The other and the last product that you're gonna need is some gaffer tape. So this is basically just to seal the fly screen onto the top of the tub. A lot of other people might use hot glue or silicon. This is just what works for me. So do whatever you want. Um, but this is just how I make my tubs up. And I find the gaffer tape lasts a couple of years before it needs replacing. It just depends on how you know brutal you are with your tubs and how much work they're getting. But this is just fine for me. The only other thing you're gonna need for this build is something to actually cut a hole in the top. So I'm probably just gonna use a soldering iron to essentially just sit down and melt some big holes in the top just so you can get that fly screen on and get the airflow in there. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna make some holes in the top of these lids. So as I was saying earlier, these are my little tubs here. They, they work, they're perfectly fine, they're gonna do the job. I am gonna reuse them for other purposes, like during different times of year. Sometimes these I've actually used them for um, raising my hatchling monitors and things in. Um, you know, these keep the monitors in, but they're starting to get a little bit of wear and tear. So I might repurpose them just for the monitors and uh, we'll, uh, we'll try to make some nicer ones up for the actual bugs themselves. 
but you can kind of see they're just a bit scummy to look into when the bugs have been kind of crawling around a bit of the bit of the petroleum jelly and things up the top. It just doesn't look great. I'm just trying to neaten things up and make it look a little bit more presentable, not only for myself but anybody else coming in here or you know, even when we go to move into a potentially an apartment, which may be on the horizon, I just want to have some tubs that actually look nice so you can't tell that there's really bugs inside of them. And then that way it's kind of just a little bit, a little bit neater and kind of freaks people out less. So I've gone ahead now and I've cut four of these lids. They're looking good. There's going to be plenty of airflow in there for all the, all the critters and everything that are inside. And I've just got a little bit of off-cut aluminium fly screen I'm going to use before I open up the new roll. But all I'm going to do is essentially just raise it together. A little patch of fly screen that's just going to be big enough to go over the hole here. And then we're going to tape it into place and that's a top done. Well there you go, just like that I've knocked up four of these bad boys. Now I'm only keeping one woody colony at the moment so I'm just actually going to go through and smear a bit of petroleum jelly around maybe a five to six centimetre layer around the top lip of one of these tubs and the rest of them I'm using for crickets. Well crickets don't really have, aren't really able to climb plastic, smooth plastic that is very well so I'm not going to worry about it. As I said, you know, this is what works for me. I just wanted to kind of neaten a few things up here so I reckon they're they're going to do their purpose and for the tiny bit of amount of money you spend on it, it means you're going to be able to hold a good array of bugs. And you know, for for me for example, you know, I've got my one woody colony. I, mean, I, I am going to split it into two, so I'll probably use another one of these. I've actually got another fifth tub there. Um, but I also go through a ton of extra small crickets, probably about 3,000 a fortnight. Um, I go through a whole stack of small crickets as well at the moment and medium crickets. So I have a bit of a variety and it'll be good to properly split them all up and you know have different sizes per tub so it'll just make feeding out a lot easier. Anyway, so I'm going to crack on, smear one of these tubs up and then we're going to get some bugs into this and check it out. So it's as easy as this guys, you just got to get a big, big chunk of the jelly straight onto there and make a nice big thick layer. So those little pesky wood roaches can't get a grip. They're a bit of an evil necessity here. I'm going to try to get that jelly off the top of that lip. This is just a perfect way to be able to hold your insects. You know, it's nice and cheap. There's a lot of space in there. I think these tubs are about 50 or 60 litres each. So it's just a good way to be able to give them some space, potentially breed some. The only thing I've noticed with the petroleum jelly is during summer, if you get a really big heat wave that comes through, it can potentially melt throughout the day. So just be, be mindful of that, you know, don't keep your insects in a place that's super hot. I don't really have much choice here, unfortunately, because uh, I'm not going to be keeping these inside. So that's just something to take into consideration. Maybe if that's going to be the case for you, you might want to go the route of flu on. We've got a green stream frog going off here. Coming into that time of year where the boys need to make some sound. Probably shouldn't be stirring him up. All right, there you go. You can see there's a little bit of a slippery layer around the inside rim there. About five or six centimeters odd. Doesn't hurt if you do it a little bit more, but I probably wouldn't go any less than that, really. And hopefully this will keep all my bugs inside the tub. 
So from there guys, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run around quickly and get all the appropriate bugs into the appropriate tubs and then put them all back and I'll show you how neat they look inside of you once they're all up, up top and up high and out of the way. Oh, so there you go guys. They look so much neater than the plastic ones up there. Now, all my live food can be kept in these black plastic tubs, all nice and neat. And it doesn't look as hideous as that. How good is that? Definitely worthwhile doing, in my opinion. So there you go guys, just another little quick tidbit video there for you. And guess what? I started up a jar. Got our own little Beach of Scary Beasts Teespring store jar. So 10% of the profits that are going off uh, Teespring are going to Sydney Wildlife. So they're going straight into Animal Rescue in Lindley's capable hands. So make sure if you haven't already, check out the Teespring store in the video description below. And if you want to support the channel in another way, apart from just getting some cool reptile merchandise, you can jump over onto Patreon. The link will be in the description below and you can put a little small donation in there should you wish to. Make sure to like the video, give it a comment if you want to, and subscribe, because there's a lot of stuff here to look at. Until next time, guys, I'll catch you on the next video.